Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we we'll thank you for this time. But bless your name because you are a good God, a great God. Gracious and glorious. You called us to yourself. So you can bless us. Bring, Lord, you open our eyes to see wondrous things out of your word. Bless your people. Lift off your people. Answer the prayers of your people. Confirm your word in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please sit down. We are talking about prayer. Prayer is common in every church. We pray to God. We expect answers from God. We have good examples, great examples of prayer. In the Bible, Abraham prayed. And God answered. On beyond that, Moses prayed. Beyond that, we know that David prayed. Samuel prayed unto God. You remember Daniel was a man of prayer too. As we go through the Old Testament, we see the people of God praying and receiving answers from God. Coming to the New Testament, Jesus prayed. And in the morning, he went to the mountains Side. A solitary place. So he could have a solitary position, preparation, so there will be no disturbance to his prayer. Then the disciples prayed. Going through the acts of the apostles. Peter prayed. John prayed. The other disciples, apostles prayed. In fact, it says when they prayed, the place was shaking. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost forth in grace and power. And then James tells us, he says the virtual prayer of a righteous man avails very much. Everybody has a desire to pray effectively. And so the disciples came to Jesus, they said, teach us how to pray. That was a giving, what has given us the Lord's prayer. You have it recorded in Matthew. You have it recorded in Luke. We're taking the prayer in Matthew. It gives us a model of prayer. It gives us a pattern of prayer. You see, when we pray, here is how to pray. Some people pray the prayer every Sunday. Other people take it for a pattern to pray. In the Acts of the Apostles, we don't find the repetition word by word of this prayer. And so it is given to us so that we can pattern our prayer according to the Lord's prayer. The title of my message today is Praying the Lord's Prayer Effectually. Look at the prayer. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. After this manner. 
ఆహారం మొదటి భాగం ఆ తర్వాత తొమ్మిది పది వచ్చిన ఇక్కడ దేవుడు ఉన్నారు మన ప్రార్థన ఎప్పుడు కూడా ప్రభువుకు ప్రథమ ప్రాధాన్యత ఇవ్వాలి ఆ తర్వాత మనము దాసుని స్థానాన్ని తీసుకోవాలి కనుక ఆ రీతిగా ప్రార్థనను విన్నపంగా కొనసాగిస్తున్నారు was this day our daily bread ee dinam ma anudina haranu dai cheyandi then he goes on to say aa tarvata inka cheptunnadu and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors ma runasthulana mem kshaminchina prakaram ma runalanu kshaminchandi then he says lead us not into temptation mamunu shodhanaloniki nadipinchakandi but deliver us from evil prathi dushtatvam nunchi vidipinchandi that's the part that relates to man idi naaku chendina bhagam beginning the prayer with god devuni andu prarthanalo nam looking at the needs of man manushuni akkarlanu choradam he concludes the prayer by coming back to god again aa tarvata marla devuni yoddaku vachi prarthana mugisthunnadu for thine is the kingdom rajyamu nide and the power shakti nide and the glory alage mahima nide because this is god now endukanaga idi devuni idi eternal god nithyudaina devudaina from everlasting to everlasting nithyatvam nunchi nithyatvam varaku unnavadu as he concludes the prayer aina prarthana mugimpu chestunnapudu i'm not to live praying here on earth nenu ikkada bhoomi meeda maatrame prarthinchalaga kaadu i want the privilege to be with god forever and ever nirantaramu devunito kuda unde nithyatvapu dhanyata kaligundali and at the end of the prayer inkanu prarthana lo he puts an amen aina amen ani mugincha this is a prayer we're going to look at as the as the master prayer ee rojuna prabhu prarthana ga deenni manam chodabothunnam number 1 is talking to god in heaven modadiga paralokapu devuni tho maatladutunnadu he is a creator ఆయన సృష్టికర్త ఈస్ అ రిడీమర్ ఆయన విమోచకుడు బై బిలీవింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద లార్డ్ జీసస్ క్రైస్ట్ ప్రభువైన యేసునందు విశ్వాసం ఉంచినప్పుడు ఆల్ ద సన్స్ అండ్ ద డాటర్స్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ దేవుని కుమారులుగా కుమార్తెలుగా అవుతాం అండ్ సో వి కెన్ సే ఆ ఫాదర్ తద్వారా మనం ఆయన తండ్రి అనవచ్చు ఈస్ నాట్ ఆ ఫాదర్ ఆన్ ఎర్త్ ఆయన భూమి మీద మన తండ్రి కాదు గాడ్ ఈస్ ఎవరీవేర్ దేవుడు ప్రతి చోట ఉన్నాడు ఈ సే ఆన్ ఎర్త్ ఆయన భూమి మీద ఉన్నారు యు సీ ఎవరీథింగ్ బీయింగ్ డన్ ఈ భూమి మీద అనేక కార్యాలు చేస్తున్నారు హెవెన్ ఇస్ ఎ స్పెషల్ డ్వెలింగ్ ప్లేస్ అయితే పరలోకము ఆయన ప్రత్యేక నివాస స్థలం జీసస్ సేడ్ తనుక యేసు అంటున్నారు ఆ ఫాదర్ హూ ఇస్ ఇన్ హెవెన్ పరలోకము అందున మా తండ్రి అండ్ దెన్ హీ కమ్స్ టు మన్ ఆ తర్వాత ఆయన మన యొద్దుకు వస్తున్నారు హీ అడ్రెసెస్ ద నీడ్ ఆఫ్ మన్ ఆన్ టు గాడ్ మానవాళి అక్కరను దేవుని చెందుకు తీసుకువెళ్ళడం హీ సేడ్ గివ్ us ma kanugrahinchandi we can only have what he gives us manam ayana ichina danane kaligi undagalam if we are cut off from god the father tandriyana devuni yaddanu cheyim pondemo we are poor adi dinatvame we abject poverty adi kevalam pedarikame we have nothing sufficient for us here on earth ayana daggar nunchi pondagapothe bhu sambandhamaina chaladu we have god in heaven paralokapu devudu we can say give us ayana manu kanugrahistharu we can say forgive us manalli kshemistharu we can say lead us not mamulni nadipinchandi ani cheppachu we can say deliver us from evil maaku dushtatvam nunchi vidudalivandi ani cheppachu and we can give the glory to him 
After we have received from the Lord, then just stand up, wipe our mouths, and then go away. We show gratitude. We acknowledge, we acknowledge the kingdom of the Father. We acknowledge the power of the Father. We acknowledge the glory of the Father. We say now and ever thou. Is the kingdom. Now and ever thine is the power. Now and ever thine is the glory. Look at that prayer. Our Father. Not just my Father. You're not the only child of God. We have children of God in different churches. In different countries. And so we have that relationship that we can say it's not just my father, our father who is in heaven. And you will see that the prayer is talking about the plurality of the family of God. We come through the same way through the same redemption through the same Christ we come out of our past and we come in relationship of peace with the living God the Father who is in heaven give us this day lead us not into temptation deliver us we must have that concept and understand Standing. That we with other people were in the family of God. As we look at the prayer, let's divide the prayer to three parts. Number one is the pattern and model of an effective prayer. How do I pray in such a way that God will answer? Jesus shows us the way. How can I pray with confidence? How can I pray with expectation? He shows us the way for effectively praying unto God. Number one, the pattern and model of an effective prayer. When we come before God, after glorifying Him, after exalting Him, we have to present a petition before the Lord. Number two is the petition and the meaningfulness of an effectual prayer. The petition will bring Look at the people that prayed in the Bible. They had definite petition they brought before God. Then at the end of the prayer, we acknowledge the power and the majesty of the Heavenly Father. The petition that we have brought has now been answered. And we give glory to God. The everlasting potentate. We acknowledge his King of Kings and his Lord of Lords. Let's look at it one by one. Number one is the pattern and the model of an effective prayer. Again, remember what Jesus said. A father which art in heaven. That section of the prayer has three important parts. Number one, we're looking at the, uh, the, the, the presentation we have before the Lord. The prayer to our Heavenly Father. And then number two, there is the pursuit 
of the father's kingdom rendavadi tandri rajyam kosamai eduru chustunnam a number 3 there is the promptness of to the father's will tandri or to the father's will tandri chittamunu jariginchadaku manam nishaya paruchukoni drudanga munduku velthunnam number 1 is the prayer to our heavenly father modadi di paralokapu tandri ki prarthisthunnam there are people who pray to angels dutalu prarthinche varu untaru Jesus says no. Yes, Allah kadanna. There are people who pray directly to Jesus. Konta mandi neruga Yesu ko prarthistharu. He says in that day you'll ask me nothing. Ask the Father in my name. Ayin chepparu na naamamuna meeru thandrini adagandi. And so it's a prayer we're praying to the Father. Kanaka manam thandri ki prarthisthunnam. For saying our Father. Maa thandri. Is God Father to everyone on earth? Thandri ena devudu bhoomi meeda andariki thandri. No. అలా కాదు కదా the jews thought because they were jews they were children of abraham automatically they were children of god yudile manukunnarante memu abraham yokka santadi ganaka memu devuni pillalam ayipothaam annattuga bhavinchar they confronted jesus christ varu yesu naithe edirinchar they said we have one father and he is god maaku oke tandri unnadu aayine devudu ani varu annaru Jesus said no. Yesaya nadu ledu. He said of your father the devil. Meeru apavadi mee tandri vaari pillalu annadu. The deeds of your father were you do. Mee tandri charyale meeru chestunnaru annadu. He's a murderer from the beginning. Aina aarambhalo aasaryakarudu. And he's a liar and a father of liars. Kaani apavadi chivariki abaddikudu abaddamulaku janakudu. How then can we really say a father who art in heaven? Aithe manam parlokamandunna maa tandri ani cheppagalugutam. He has told us in second Corinthians chapter 6 Renda Korinthi Patrika 6th adhyayamlo He tells us in verse 16 16th vachanalu teliyichestunnadu In the latter part he says that he wants to be our god Chivari bhagamlo manam chuste mana tandri ga devuni ga undu korutunnadu He says there's no agreement for the temple of god and idols devalayamunaku devuni yokka bidalu kaani vigrahalaku sambandham ledhu no agreement between darkness and light alage andhakaraniki veluku sambandham ledhu he says for ye are the temple of the living god meeru jeeva magala devuniki aalayamai unnaru as god has said i will dwell in them devudu selavichinatluga vaarina nivasam chestaru i will walk in them nenu vaaru madhya sancharistaan i will be there god and they shall be my people nenu vaariki devudanai untanu vaaru naaku prajalai untaru what do i do నేను ఏం చేయాలి what do you do మీరు ఏం చేయాలి what can man do నరుడు ఏం చేయగలడు so that he can effectively say a father what in heaven తద్వార ప్రతిభావంతంగా పరలోకమందు నమ తండ్రి అని పిలవాలి verse 17 tells us 17వ వచనంలో he says where for come out from among them ఆయన అంటున్నాడు వారి మధ్య నుంచి మనం బయలువెడలి వచ్చాం and be separate says the lord ఆయన చెప్తున్నారు మనం వేరుపరచబడ్డాం and touch not the unclean thing కనుక అపవిత్రమైన దానిని ముట్టకుడి I will receive you. నేను అప్పుడు మిమ్మల్ని స్వీకరిస్తాను. Then in verse 18. ఆ తరువాత 18వ వచనంలో Jesus then I will be a father unto you. అప్పుడు నేను మీకు తండ్రిగా ఉంటాను. We come out of darkness. మన అంధకారంలో నుంచి బయటికి వచ్చినప్పుడు We come out of our past life. మన గతంలో నుంచి మనం బయటికి వచ్చినప్పుడు We come out of sin and evil. మన పాపంలో నుంచి దుష్టత్వంలో నుంచి బయటికి వచ్చినప్పుడు We come away from our idols. మన యొక్క విగ్రహాల నుంచి మనం బయటికి వచ్చినప్పుడు We come out of everything that is gains the life and the revelation of god devun yokka pratyakshata jeevaniki viruddhanga unna daani nunchi bayitiki vachinappudu we come through jesus christ manamu yesu christu dwara vastunnam we come into the family manamu kutumbam loniki vastunnam we come out bayitiki vachestunnam we come through through dwara vastunnam we come into manamu daani loniki vastunnam come into the family of god devuni kutumbam loniki vastunnam we come out of sin పాపములో నుంచి బయటకు out of evil దుష్టత్వములో నుంచి బయటకు out of every bad thing wrong doing that we have been doing మనము చేయించిన అక్రమ తప్పు కార్యాల నుంచి బయటకు we come out బయటకు వస్తున్నాం we come through అలాగే ద్వారా వస్తున్నాం we come through the lord jesus christ ప్రభు అయిన యేసు ద్వారా వస్తున్నాం we don't come with our good works మన మంచి కార్యాల ద్వారా కాదు we don't come with our good name మన మంచి పేరు ద్వారా కాదు we have nothing good మనకి ఏ మంచి లేదు man is born in sin నరుడు జన్మతహ పాపి and the only way to the heavenly father పరలోకపు తండ్రికి ఒకే మార్గం is jesus christ our lord and savior మన ప్రభు రక్షకుడైన యేసుక్రీస్తు మాత్రమే come out బయటికి రండి come through 
varaarandi come into loni ki randi come into the kingdom daivarajyamloni ki randi i will come into the family of god manamu devuni kutumbamloni ki vachesa and he says i will be a father unto you ayan antunnar nenu meeku tandri ga untanu i shall be my sons and my daughters says the lord almighty sarva shakti kala devudu salavistadu neeru naaku kumarulu kumartulu ga untaru number one there our prayer is to the heavenly father modadi ga mana prarthana paralokamu tandriki number two rendavadi it tells us the pursuit of the father's kingdom daiva rajyanni tandri rajyanni swatantrinchukomani cheptunnadu as we come back to the pray in matthew chapter 6 matthew suvartha 6th adhyayamlo ona prarthana yuddha vachinaa pudu jesus in verse 10 ayana 10th vachinaalo cheptunnadu says thy kingdom come nee rajyam ochinu gaaka the kingdom of god daiva rajyam there are three aspects of the kingdom of god daiva rajyanni sambandhinchi moodu vishayalu unnai the external kingdom adi bahiranga rajyam is king is ruler over the whole earth aina raja yundi sarva bhumi ki ni raja yunna jesus christ upholds the whole universe yesu christ viswantaralamunu chepattukoni unnadu we can see the orderliness manamu aina yokka paripalana chudagalam we can see the control manam aina swadhinanni chudagalam the god who created the universe has not led the world to chance viswam yokka srushtikarta lokanni alagune vidichipetteyaledu he controls everything aina samasthanni tana swadhinalo unchukunnadu of all the earth aina sarva bhumi ki devudu god of all flesh sarva sharirulaku devudu god a father mana tandri ana devudu has an external kingdom bahiranga rajyanni kaligunna nabachu has an internal kingdom antaranga rajyam jesus said the kingdom of god is in you isai chepparu daiva rajyam mee lo undi the kingdom of god is not meat and drink daiva rajyam bhojanamu paanamu kaadu it is righteousness adi neetiyu it is peace adi samadhanam joy in the holy ghost parishuddha atma yandali aanandam external kingdom bahiranga rajyam that's right there there adi akkad undi internal kingdom antaranga rajyam when you invite christ into your heart christ nemi hrudayamlo ka ahvanisthe christ is king christ raju and the king enters your heart raju mi hrudayamlo ku vastaru and your life comes under the control of that king mi jeevithama raju adipatyam krindaku vastundi is a prayer you have been praying meeru chesina prarthana the kingdom of god will come internally into you daivarajyam mi yokka antarangamu loniki vastundi when the kingdom comes ee rajyam ochina pudu it starts in a small way adi chinna ga aaramminchabadutundi so read the bible study the word of god vakyanni chaduthuna pudu vakyanni dhyanisthunna pudu yield more and more to god mari ekko devuniki lobarchukunna pudu and he brings his nature to operate in our lives mana jeevithallo pani cheyadaniki aayana tana swabhavanni isukostadu it sows into the fullness of the holy ghost aayana శుద్ధాత్మ సంపూర్ణత లోనికి నడిపిస్తాడు thy kingdom come ni rajyam ochunu gaaka after you are saved and born again meeru marla janminchina tarvata that eternal kingdom devundi rajyamlo kochaka expanding and going deep and higher aa rajyam lotul loniki avunathyam loniki vistaristhundi eternal kingdom antaranga rajyam number 1 external kingdom modadi di bahiranga rajyam number 2 internal kingdom rendavadi antaranga rajyam number 3 eternal kingdom moodavadi nityamaina rajyam that has not come అది ఇంకా రాలేదు దట్స్ వై ది చర్చ్ ఇస్ ప్రే సంగం దాని కోసం ప్రార్థిస్తుంది లార్డ్ వెన్ ఆర్ యు కమింగ్ ప్రభు ఆ మీరు ఎప్పుడు రాబోతున్నారు వెన్ ఆర్ యు ఎస్టాబ్లిషింగ్ యువర్ ఇటర్నల్ కింగ్డమ్ ఎప్పుడు మీ నిత్య రాజ్యాన్ని స్థాపిస్తారు అండ్ దెన్ దట్స్ వై ది డిసిపల్స్ ఇన్ వుడ్ యు బ్రింగ్ ది కింగ్డమ్ టు ఇజ్రాయెల్ యాట్ దిస్ టైం అదినాలో వారు యేసును అడిగారు ఈ సమయం మంది ఇజ్రాయెల్కు నువ్వు రాజ్యం ఇస్తావా అండ్ హి సెడ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ నాట్ ఫర్ యు టు నో ఆయన అన్నారు అది తెలుసుకోవడం మీ వంతు కాదు టైం ఆఫ్ డిసీజన్ ఆ యొక్క సమయం మీ స్వాధీనంలో లేదు ఫాదర్ హస్ రిసన్ తండ్రి తన చేతుల్లో ఉంచుకున్నాడు సర్వ షు గోయింగ్ టు ఆల్ ద వరల్డ్ అండ్ ప్రిచ్ ది గాస్పెల్ టు ఎవరీ క్రియేచర్ సర్వ లోకానికి వెళ్లి సర్వ సృష్టికి స్వార్థను బోధించండి అండ్ ఇన్ డ్యూ టైం సగిన సమయం వరకు గాడ్స్ అపాయింటెడ్ టైం దేవుని నియామక కాలమందు ఇటర్నల్ కింగ్డమ్ వర్ కమ్ ఆ నిత్య జీవ రాజ్యం వస్తుంది వెన్ దట్ కింగ్డమ్ కమ్స్ ఆ రాజ్యం వచ్చినప్పుడు దే ఫర్ బి బౌండ్ అండ్ పోచ్ ఇన్ ద బాటమ్ లెస్ పిట్ మరణం బంధించబడుతుంది అగాధములోనికి గెట్టి వేయబడుతుంది ఆ రాజ్యం వచ్చినప్పుడు క్రైస్ట్ వర్ రైన్ వితౌట్ ఎ రైవల్ క్రీస్తు పరిపాలన చేయనయున వెన్ దట్ కింగ్డమ్ కమ్స్ ఆ రాజ్యం వచ్చినప్పుడు ఆల్ ది వైల్డ్ యానిమల్స్ వుడ్ లూస్ దేర్ పాయిజన్ 
and the snake and the, and, the, and the lions and the lamb will eat together in the same place. Krura jentulaku kruratvam potundi, sarpalaku visham potundi, sadhu jentulaga sahajivanan chastai. And today as we pray for the kingdom, we are also pursuing the kingdom. And we pursue the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. If we pray, thy kingdom come, and we do nothing to speed the coming of that kingdom. To tell the world around us about the king. To tell the people around us to yield to the king. Our prayer does not have action that backs it up. And so we have the pursuit of the Father's kingdom. As he continues to teach us the prayer. He now goes to the next point. And he says, thy will be done. On earth, as it is in heaven, he says, while we're pursuing the kingdom, there's the promptness in doing the Father's will. He has left us here on earth. We're saved. If there were nothing to do after salvation, at the point of salvation, he will take us to heaven. But he has let us here. So we can pursue the coming of the kingdom. He has let us here. So we can demonstrate doing the will of the Father in heaven. How are we to do the will of God? How are we to do the will of God? Because he says they will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We can refer to the people in the past. The people in the old covenant. How they did the will of God. Some of them did the will of God partially. Some of them did the will of God selectively. Some of them did the will of God temporarily. It wasn't their permanent state of life. So Jesus said, doing the will of God partially not acceptable. Doing the will of God selectively that's not acceptable. Doing the will of God, kind of temporarily, I do it today, I'll do my will tomorrow, not acceptable. He said, This is how to pray. This is what to pray for. Thy will be done here on earth as it is done in heaven. Who are the people doing the will of God in heaven? The angels are doing the will of God in heaven. In Psalm 103. Reading from verse 19. Psalm 103 verse 19. It tells us the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. And then he says in verse 20. Bless the Lord ye his angels that excel in strength do his commandments. Hacking and listening and observing and obeying the voice of his word. We look at the angels in heaven. They do the will of God promptly. 
what we hear the commandment of God. I want to do the will of God. We do that will promptly. When he calls you to repent. The will of God is your repentance. You don't delay. You don't delete that will promptly. Because you are righteous life. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. You know, I think about that. I'll see if other people accept that. I don't want to be the lonely man, the lonely woman that is holy and sanctified. We don't wait for other people that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven promptly. And he's in his commands. Anything he sends us for to do. The angels do the will of God promptly and we too that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Dangers do the will of God without partiality. Without selection. There are some people, yes, I'll do the will of I like that, I'll do it. I don't like that, I will not do it. Don't like that, do it. We are not to debate the word of God. We are not to select the one we want to do. Angels don't select. Angels don't say, I like that, I don't like that. As angels observe and they do the will of God with impartiality. So we give ourselves to the will of God. God sent angels to Sodom and Gomorrah. Telling them this is what to do. This is negative. I don't like to run an errand like this. I don't like going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. No argument. No debate. No reasoning in their own canal way. God has spoken. And the angels run. And they do the will of God. When God has spoken to us. And has said this is what you do. I will be done on earth. Earth as it is done in heaven. It, it tells us only the people that do the will of God will abide forever. Jesus was preaching somewhere. And some people came to him. They said, your mother and your brothers and sisters are looking for you. And and Jesus revealed a never to be forgotten principle. So, who's my mother? Who are my brethren? Then he pointed to a disciples. He pointed to those who are born again. He pointed to those who are walking in the way of righteousness. And he said, these who do the will of God are my mother and my brothers and my sisters. A father which art in heaven, hallowed, honored, exalted be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And now he brings us to the next part of the prayer. This is point number two now. Point number two is the petition 
one of the meaningfulness in an effective prayer. When, when we come to pray, there must be a definite petition. When Abraham prayed, he had a definite petition. When Moses prayed, there was a definite petition. And when David prayed, there was definite petition. When those apostles in the Acts of the Apostles prayed, they had definite petition before the Lord. Which you must have definite petition when we pray. And, and the petition must be meaningful. You must understand what you are praying for. Heaven must understand what you are praying for. The petition and meaningfulness in an effectual prayer. Man has need. The Father God in heaven can supply the need. As we look at the petition, we look at it in three perspectives. Number one, the petition for bread for the whole man. Number two, the pardon for debts through the wholesome mercy. And then number three, number three the protection from temptation. Protection from Temptation. Look at the petition the Lord has given us that we can ask the Father. Number one is the petition for bread for the whole man. The whole man is made of three parts. Like God is said, like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. There is the Holy Trinity. There is the Human Trinity. We have the Spirit, we have the Soul, we have the Body. If the body is well fed, but the soul is famishing, and the spirit is dying of hunger. The whole man has not been fed. And when he says, give us this day our daily bread in Matthew chapter 6 verse 11 give us this day our daily bread is talking about bread made available to the whole man. We human beings will think about the bread on the table. The vegetables and the, all the things that will give nutrients to our body. When I take orange, when I take apple, apple when I take the broccoli, when I take the rice, that doesn't feed my spirit. It doesn't feed my soul. But Give me the bread for the whole man. The material provision that I put in my mouth. For the body. And Jesus said, man shall not live by that bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall man live. That one is for my soul. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. If any man eats this bread, he will live forever. The bread on the table cannot make you live forever. He said your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they are 
dead. I am the bread from heaven. So they said, I can't understand this. And some people, whatever they don't understand, they throw out. Why don't you wait? He said, the word I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. So we are asking bread for the body. Bread for the soul. Bread for the spirit. So that the whole man, spirit, soul and body, will grow together. And now one of these days, the body will die. And the body will be buried. Remember, the words I speak unto you. The spirit and their life. Our soul and spirit will now go to God. By the strength of the bread of life, word of life, the living waters that we have taken in. And so we need to pray every time. Give us this day. Our daily bread. God has given us the bread physical. The bread natural. This is the farm. Somebody has to bring it from the farm and bring it to the market. Give us this day. You are not going to sit in your house and then the bread will drop into your mouth. He is giving us the bread. He is giving us the air to breathe. He is not going to do the in and out of the air for you. Do that. He is giving us. Take it. He's provided the water to drink. You must drink. Give us this dear daily bread. He's giving us the living bread. The word of God. It's in the Bible. He has given us. You must take it. You must read it. You must analyze it. You must meditate on it. You must apply to yourself. He has given us the spiritual bread. He has given us Christ. It's the bread that fills our spirit. He has given us the Holy Ghost. But you have to receive. You have to take. You have to believe. And then the benefit of the bread will be available for you. Number two there. He tells us about the pardon of debts through wholesome mercy. He promises forgiveness. There are two sides to the forgiveness. There is the foreigner coming from outside. He has not been in the family. He's a sinner. He's a rebellious person. He wakes up. He says, I am a sinner. I feel condemned. I feel guilty. And he says, I will arise and go to God. He comes. He says, give me my sin. He comes as a foreigner. There's a second part of forgiveness. Already you are a member of the family of God. You are saved. You have the joy of salvation. If I die, I am going to heaven. But sometimes like children at home. Sometimes they are slow to do what we tell them to do. 
Sometimes they go their own way. Sometimes we have to ask them, have you done that thing I told you to do? And the child has to say, I am sorry daddy, I am sorry mommy. Please forgive me, I will go and do it now. Members of the family of God were still children of God. We still born again. We still have Christ living in us. But sometimes he told us to do something. And we're slow. And we delay. It. And then God comes to challenge us. Have you done what I told you to do? He's asking us not as a foreigner. Not as a sinner, not as somebody outside the kingdom, is asking us as a member of the family. Are we have not done what he told us to do. And as a member of the family of God, will say, I am sorry, forgive me. Initial forgiveness. Just coming into the kingdom. And he forgives us. But then while we're in the kingdom, you do something that your conscience is saying does not right. Because I'm a child of God. Right or wrong. I'm going on in my way. I will pile up guilt and condemnation in our hearts. And our fellowship is affected. Relationship, yes. Father, son, relationship, yes. Bridegroom, bride, relationship, yes. Because we have settled that when we came into the kingdom. What are you going to do with, with relationship without fellowship? And God says, you've done this, you've done this. I have somewhat against you. You've left your first love. And he says, repent. That means then we come back to God. Thank you, my father. We are praying to the Heavenly Father. We're not praying to the judge. He's judge to the world. His father to us. He's creator to his creatures. He is father to us. We come to the father. Forgive us our debts. As we forgive those that trespass against us. Look at this man that was forgiven. And then as he came out, he saw another servant like himself. He says, pay me what you owe me. Oh, that was, be patient with me, I will pay you all. He said, no, pay me now. He cast him into the prison. His fellow servant saw what he had done. He reported to the Lord. And the Lord said, you wicked servant. I forgive you that much. Shouldn't you have forgiven your fellow servant? He wants us to forgive those who offend us. He wants the husband to forgive the wife. But many people in the world, mm -mm, I will not forgive my wife. That's what causes separation. That's what causes divorce. Members of the church who offend the pastor. And the pastor said, forever, forever, I will not forgive that member. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those that trespass against us. Our neighbors will offend us. 
they will step on our toes. Some of them do it intentionally. Some of them do it ignorantly. And yet we forgive. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Look at number three there. Number three is protection from temptation of warish messengers. There are temptations in the world. There are temptations in every city. There are things that attract us so as to attack us. They hide the attacking aspect and they reveal the attractive aspect. They attract us to attack us. There are things in the world. They beckon on us to brutalize us. They hide the brutality that they have in mind. They beckon, they say, come, come. And you think they have good intention. They beckon to brutalize. There are things in the world that, call, that call us. They call us to crush us. They hide the aspect of crushing us. They just smile and they say, come. But God knows their intention. We don't see the coming attack. God sees the coming attack. We don't see the coming brutalization, but he sees the brutalization. We only see them calling. We cannot see the crushing that they have. So we pray to the God who sees beyond the attraction. To the God who sees beyond the beckoning. To the God who sees beyond the call. That's why we say, our fa my father knows. And because he knows all things. He knows things present. He knows things future. We say, God, I'm ignorant. I'm blind. I cannot see the intention of the one calling me. And so I pray lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. God called Abraham and he came out of the awe of the Chaldees. He says, I'm going to bless you. You will be a blessing to the rest of the world. Lord was his nephew. And Lord said, if it's good for Abraham, it's good for me. If Abraham is going to be a blessing, I want to join him and share in that blessing. And so they went together. Abraham had wife. Lord had wife. Even had children before Abraham. And Abraham had cattle. Abraham had servants. Lord had servants at cattle. One was little misunderstanding between Lord's uh, cattle's rearers and Abraham's uh, Abraham said, Abraham. there be no quarrel. If you want to choose any part of the land, you go to the right, or go to the left, or you prefer the left, I'll go to the right. Lord did not see counseling, guidance. He looked at Sodom. 
He looked at the well watered ground. And since Abraham has given me the first choice, this is what I choose. Lead us not into temptation. The place he chose was a place of temptation. We're told he built his tent near Sodom. By and by, he got into Sodom. By and by, he was a vine to sit at the gate of Sodom. The choices were made. The decisions were made. They may attract us. They might later attack us. They might beckon on us. They might later brutalize us. They might call us. They, can, they may later crush us. You know the story. Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed. Lot did not take out one cattle, one sheep. All his cattle rearers burnt up. He even lost his wife that became a pillar of salt. That's why Jesus said, We're people of history. We know the past. We know a bit of the present. We know nothing of the future. So, lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. He will deliver us. We come to the third part of the prayer. The third part of the prayer is talking about the power and the majesty of the everlasting potentate. The potentate is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The potentate is the one that rules over the whole universe. The potentate is the one that has all power. Both in heaven and on earth. We want to recognize the power and the majesty of the everlasting potentate. Now, we want to realize that now. We don't want to wait like Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel revealed the truth to Nebuchadnezzar. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego demonstrated the truth, revelation unto Nebuchadnezzar. But Nebuchadnezzar remained the natural man. One came to Nebuchadnezzar that if you continue like this, God is taking record. Heaven will come on you and you will be turned to an animal. And Daniel said, Get my counsel. Receive my guidance. He didn't yield. Twelve months after, Nebuchadnezzar looked at Babylon. Said, this is the Babylon I built by the might of my power. And the voice of the watchers came from heaven. To you, it is said, you'll be driven away from man. You know the story? He ate grass like. Animal. The nails grew like the claws of the birds. Eventually he came to his senses. 
We don't have to go through that. Christ has shown us who God is. He is our Father. He is the provider. He is the lover of our soul. Before anything comes on us like Nebuchadnezzar, we can say, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We need to understand and we walk in that knowledge because of the power, the majesty of the everlasting potentate. Look at those three things there. Number one is the possessor of the everlasting kingdom. The possessor of the everlasting kingdom. There is the evangelical kingdom. We are born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There is the evangelical kingdom. There is the earthly kingdom. As long as we are here, the kingdom belongs to the Lord. Number three, there is the everlasting kingdom. We are the partakers of the earthly kingdom. By redemption, by being born again, we become part of the evangelical kingdom. And, and when Christ shall come and establish that everlasting kingdom, our names are written in the book of life. Forever and forever will be with the Lord. Number two, there is the potentate ways, eternal power. The God we serve has ultimate power. The God we serve has or irresistible power. Nobody has ever resisted the power of God and has succeeded. We have come to submit to that power. When Christ rose from the dead, before he left, he said, All power on us and in heaven is given unto me. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, with that ultimate power, with that all sufficient power, I am with you until the end of the world. And he has given that part of that power to us. He says, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Serpents have power, scorpions have power. The power of Christ he has given you is higher and greater than the power of serpents and scorpions. And he says he gives us power over the power of the enemy. We are power greater than the power of the enemy. Many times we are ignorant of what we have. We are knowledgeable of what they have. Many times we look what we have. We emphasize what they have. We go around and my enemy is powerful. My enemy is mighty. No. You didn't look at the power he has given you. You 
belittled your own power. Sometimes you look at you, you look at somebody. He has strength and power. But he is looking at the power of the other person. And in his carnal comparison. It is common comparison. It is callous comparison. He says, others have power. I don't have power. I give unto your power above the power of all your enemies. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Look at Moses in the midst of those magicians in Egypt. Look at the one rod in the hand of that Moses. That power that he has in that single rod was about the power of all the magicians and the army and everybody in Egypt. You say, I wish I had a rod. You don't have a rod, but you have the word. And you have the blood. What Moses did by the rod, we do by the blood and the word. And he overcame him. But the blood of the Lamb and the word and the testimony in their mouth. You have power. Greater than the power in the world. Number three is the perpetuity of his excellent glory. Is the Lord of glory. Is the God of glory. And we say. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. How long? I said, How long? Some people say the first century Christians, oh, they had glory and power. But we, the church of today, the 21st century, some people say, I wish I lived at the time of the first century. Is God weaker today than he was at that time? Is the Almighty, is the All Sufficient poorer today than it was at that time? The same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And why did Christ come? Christ came to bring many sons to glory. To bring you to glory. Always looking down. Look up. Always looking back. Look forward. The Lord has come to bring you to glory. Shame gone. Condemnation gone. Weakness gone. Power. Shakti. Kingdom. Rajyam. Glory. Mahima. For you. Mikosa. And when Christ will come. He will come from glory. To come and take his people here on earth. And he will take you to everlasting glory. That's the prayer he tells us to pray. That's the prayer he has taught us. That's the prayer he will answer. The prayer by the petitioner. The petition by the person praying. And the power with which he will answer our prayer. Today he will answer you by power. He will answer you by full provision. He will answer you and bring glory into your life. Glory in your family. Glory all 
around you. You walk majestically and confidently through life. Experiencing his power, his grace, his glory every day of your life. And on the final day, when the dead in Christ shall rise and we who are alive will be caught up together with them in the air you will enter the everlasting kingdom there will be crowns on your head there will be stars in your crown you will shine forever and ever like the firmament of heaven Glory today. Mahima. Glory tomorrow. Repadiki Mahima. Glory forever. Erosu Mahima. Repu Mahima. Nirantara Mahima. Let's rise up and pray. Yamandi Manu Lich Nilbada. The Lord brings glory to every life. Prabhu Prati Jivitaniki Mahiman is tunar. Say, Lord, I believe. Chapandi Prabhuani and Namutan. Amen. Your life. Whatever problem, whatever challenge, he has the power to turn everything around. We're going to pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for the prayer you have taught us. Father, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Grant us grace to do your will on earth as it is done in heaven. Lord, deliver us from temptation. Deliver us from evil. Let your people have the grace and the glory and the godliness that will move on and on and on in the strength of the Lord. Any need in every life, supply. Any sickness, any pain, take them away. Answer by your power power from heaven. Do good in every life. Let all your children have confidence in you. And when the Lord shall come, they'll find everyone ready. Ready to go to the everlasting kingdom. Confirm each in every life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.